In this video, we're going to talk about something called the remainder theorem. Now, this is going to rely on you being able to do some form of division. Most of the problems will probably require synthetic division, but you might have to use um, long division as well. So just be aware of that. So we're going to go through some different problems here and see what we can do. So very first problem says to identify the zeros of the function. Well, if we're going to identify the zeros, we're going to set each factor equal to zero and solve. Except that's not supposed to be 30, it's supposed to equal zero. All right, so x equals 2 and x equals negative 3 are the zeros of the function. Okay, so we had two factors. Each factor had a variable of x in it, and so each of those factors will give us a zero. All right, number two, write the equation of a function with zeros four and negative three. Now, this four is a positive four, which means when I write its factor, I'm gonna have x minus four, and this is a zero that's negative, so when I write its factor, I'm gonna do x plus three, okay? Now it's a little weird, but you can actually work these answers backwards. If we know that x is equal to four, to make the zero, we would want this to be equal to zero. So again, I said this is gonna be a little bit weird. You could actually subtract four from both sides. So you'd get x minus four is equal to zero. And so now we have our actual factor that gives us this answer, the zero of four. You could do the exact same thing. If we started with x is equal to negative 3, to make this equal to 0, we would, well, add 3 to both sides. So x plus 3 is equal to 0, and now we have the actual factor, and that's where we got those answers. Okay? All right, so that's number 1 and number 2. All right, number 3. Um, negative 4 is a 0 of the binomial x plus 4. So that's what we were just talking about. If we take x plus 4 and we set it equal to 0, we would get negative 4. Okay. Use the function p of x, and there's a function, to find p of negative 4. Well, that just means all of these x's, every single one of them, I'm going to replace with a negative 4. So p of negative 4 is equal to, and I'm going to use parentheses everywhere I need to, okay, plus 4 times negative 4, and then plus 12. All right, so let's see. Some of these numbers are not going to be too pretty, so let me see if I can pull up. I'm going to go ahead and pop up um, Calculate 84 here and use it as a uh, nifty handy data calculator. Let me clear out all the mess I had in there. All right, so let's see. Negative 4 to the 4th power. And I'm just taking my time putting this in here so I don't um, screw it up or lose any pieces or parts because I've only done that lots of times and then gotten frustrated. <laughs> so I'd rather take my time now. All right, so I am getting this answer to be 172. Nice answer, right? So P of negative 4, I'm getting 172. All right, so now let's see what the next thing is that they want us to do. Okay, so use synthetic division. It specifically says synthetic division to divide that function, same function, by x is equal to 4. Or I'm sorry, x plus 4. Let me go ahead and get rid of calculated E4 there. Now, remember, when we do this division for synthetic, we need to take this divisor and find it 0. So x plus 4 is equal to 0, which means x is equal to negative 4. Okay. So I'm going to use negative 4. Little box here. Remind myself I'm doing synthetic division. Now, I want to pull all the coefficients, but remember, if we're starting with x to the fourth, I'm going to need a placeholder here for x cubed. So I'm going to have 1, the placeholder of 0. Then I've got negative 5. I've got 4. And I've got 12. 
All right, so I'm gonna zoom in on that. So first number, drop it straight down, multiply, negative four. Now we're gonna add, multiply, add, yep, that's 11. Multiply, so negative 44, add, what is that, negative 40 now? Yep, all right, and then negative four times negative 40, is going to be 160. And one more time, I'm gonna add this up, and it's gonna be 172. All right, so my remainder here is 172. It says, do not write the remainder over the divisor, so I follow their directions. Okay, take a second, and I want you to compare the answer for P of negative four to the remainder of what we just got in problem number four. What do you notice? I'm hoping you notice they're the exact same thing. So P of negative four is equal to the remainder from our division, okay? So here's the deal. The remainder theorem lets us do kind of a couple things you can actually use the remainder theorem to find function values at a given point by doing synthetic division instead of doing the actual function notation. So describing words two different ways to find a P of negative three. Now I'm not gonna be very specific in terms of um, using sentences, but in terms of describing words, um, you could find, so replace, uh, let me try this again, replace x with negative 3 in p of x, okay? So that would be, you'd want to find p of negative 3 by replacing every single one of the x's with a negative 3. Plus 4 times negative 3 and then plus 12. Or use synthetic division. I feel like there's a missing E in there somewhere. Uh, there is. Wow, I missed a whole bunch of letters in that. <laughs> wow. All right, there we go. Synthetic. Better. Uh, division. Uh, to divide, whoops, divide P of X by negative three, or I guess using negative three, but by negative three works. Um, and then, and the answer is the remainder. Okay. So we're actually going to do part B here is to actually figure it out, okay? So method one is going to be the function method. So we're gonna find P of negative three. And like I did, every one of these X's is going to get replaced with a negative three, okay? All right. So this is going to be a great place for me to go ahead and pop back up Calculate 84 or whatever your um, technology of choice is here. All right, negative 3, I'm going to raise that to the fourth power, minus 5 times negative 3 to the second power, plus 4 times negative 3, and then plus 12. I got 36. Okay, so now I'm gonna leave calculate 84 up there just for fun. And I'm gonna do the exact same thing, but this time I'm gonna do, um, or I'm gonna find the same problem, uh, but this time I'm gonna use synthetic division. So negative three is my value for x. My coefficients are one. I need a placeholder for uh, my x cubed. x squared is negative five x is 4, and then I've got 12. Okay, 
So first number drop, that's going to be negative 3 when I multiply. So negative 3, 9, 4, negative 12, negative 8, negative 24. Nope, positive 24. I lied to you. Sorry. Try that again. There we go. All right, so 12 and 24 makes 36, and lo and behold, we got the exact same answer in both problems, okay? So that's the kind of idea behind the remainder theorem. Whether you use your function notation, all right, or you use synthetic division and find the remainder, that's what you're finding in both cases. It's what's called the remainder theorem. Mathematicians, not creative about naming things. Um, I'm going to go ahead and close the video here, and I will pop up a second video going through um, part two of the remainder theorem, which is using um, synthetic division and substitution to evaluate, so you can see how it's working for some examples.